networking sucks. I don't want to go out and speak to people who've got no interest in what I do and like make small talk and uh that's what I thought. In fact, that's what networking used to be like until everything changed. Today I'm talking to Martin Wiskin from the Creative Collective Networking Group. He's one of the people who has made networking change. So this episode is not just about three reasons to start your own networking group. It's about looking at changing networking and maybe making the world a better place while we do it. You ready? This is Martin Wiskin. We're talking about the three reasons to start your own networking group. Here we go. So my argument as a business owner is that networking is a complete waste of time. It's a bunch of boring people I don't want to speak to in a stuffy little room where everyone would far rather be anywhere else. Now, if that was really my opinion, how much trouble would I be in? I was going to say I agree. <laughs> so uh... <laughs> Great start. Well, go on then. Tell us, tell us why. Tell us why well, networking is that what, bad. What I picked up on there was one thing, and I've been talking about this loads with, with people recently, there's some really good or potentially great local events going on face-to-face things where you go to this amazing venue or site for, for a bit of networking. You arrange to meet people, you know, there you're thinking, yeah, I'll pick up, maybe pick up some new contacts and you get there and it's in the tiniest little room that they've hired out of this splendid <laughs> like stately home. And then yes. you're put in the boot cupboard <laughs> pretty much. And there's then 60 or 70 people all shouting at each other in a room with no windows and it's just awful. It is horrible because I have, to, I have to be careful with my with my voice. I, I can't shout too much, and I can't take people's germs too much. And there's a lot <laughs> of spit flying around in those little rooms. This this is right. The, the reason I've got you on here today is because, as as perhaps a reaction to this, you started your own networking group. But I'm quite enjoying pulling at this this thread of bad networking at the moment. First networking thing I went to was when I first started in business in about 2000. So I was, well, I can't exactly say I was small. I've never been a small person, but I was young. And I can remember walking in and what felt like about 40 accountants just leapt on me, like fresh mm. blood, like, who is this? Yeah. And I didn't go back for many, many years, but things have changed. And we're here today to talk about three reasons you should start your own networking group because that's what you've done. I realized I was pointing my pen at you then. Sorry, uh, podcast oh, listeners, but on the video, intimidated I'm intimidated by that. I'm getting, I'm going to be like one of those intimidating hosts, like uh, with a big out of focus finger. Right. So you started your own networking group. Let's just kind of very briefly explain what that networking group is and what the niche is. The niche is, well, it's called the Creative Collective Networking Group. We had to put that bit on the end to differentiate it from all of the other, the creative collectives out there, <laughs> <laughs> which we found out about after we'd started and chosen the name. Um, and it's a, a base format. It is a networking group for businesses, but mm-hmm. it's just for businesses linked to or directly in the creative sector. Cool. So... We don't want to kind of dive too much into the origin story. I think we've probably covered that by uh, both of us revealing how yep. bad networking used to be. So three reasons why you should start your own networking group. Not just go to networking, but just start your own networking group. What's reason number one? Reason number one, um, I had a chat with someone before I started it, and she gave some really great advice. She said, you've got t- a choice to make, and there's two options. One, make money from the group, or two, build a community and foster growth you know for for lots and lots of people including yourself and of course we we made the stupid decision of ignoring the money and going down the community route uh, no there's it wasn't a stupid decision and yes yeah, so <laughs> c- community is for me the most important part of that group it is a community to me and i think a lot of other members more than a business networking group um and it's just a nice place to be around and to know that you've got that the like it all, it, there's also going to be so many cliched sound bites in what i'm saying probably but like, ma- this is like-minded YouTube individuals <laughs> <laughs> like-minded individuals all sort of working in the same sort of places doing the same sort of things who can relate to much more i guess quicker and easier than I'm not going to name any other networking groups, but if, for example, I go and hang out with five accountants, six mortgage brokers, and I know those guys and they're all great, but it's it's easier to converse 
creative stuff with other creatives, I think is a, a polite way of putting it. Yeah, got two two things to say that. The, the first one is that one of the challenges I know not just myself, but other people have is when you're in a networking environment and you know nothing about the other people's jobs, mm. the conversation can be quite challenging. Um, and especially if you're kind of socially awkward in any way, it's, it's not fun. Mm. The second one is, I'm going to play devil's advocate here, which is the worst board game ever, but play devil's advocate. Surely all these people are competitors. Why would they be getting in a room together? Shouldn't they all be holding secrets from each other and being stealthy? That's exactly what I thought when I first started freelancing as a voiceover. I thought, well, everyone else has got voices that's doing voiceover. That means everyone is my enemy. And I sort of brought that in from a corporate background where it was our business against all the other businesses that did the same thing, pitching for those mm. jobs. But of course, there's everyone's got a different voice, you know, and brings brings something different to the voiceover party. A very noisy and annoying party, a voiceover party. <laughs> <laughs> um, I forgot the question. I'm sorry. What was the question? We're talking about community, so I'm saying that money, which I'm guessing is something that would be hard to chase with a, a networking group. I don't think they uh mm. they're not known for for being bountiful pots of gold, but I can see how that might be harder to to maintain. So I fully celebrate your your decision to to build a community rather mm. than to build a a pot, a pot of cash, yeah, which uh, probably wouldn't have happened to be fair. And it hasn't, and it won't. And it hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but that I, I think doing it this way, and certainly because it's a niche group, we've been really really lucky with who we've had come through the doors. We've only had a couple of people who. And no disrespect to anybody because everyone does different stuff and, you know, you can't get along with everybody that you meet on networking. And that's the same as you can't get on with everybody that comes to your own networking group if you've got one. Um, But we've been really lucky because we're in that niche, you know, so everybody pretty much gets it as soon as they Mm. come in. And if they don't, they don't come back and that's fine. You know, it can't be for everyone. No, exactly. You can't be all things to all people. But rather than just kind of talking about point number one, community, let, let's kind of try and try and give some some good examples of that. Because, yeah, it's really nice being in a, a room or a virtual room, a bit both, with the people who you have community with. But yes. how does that benefit you as a business owner to be to sort of nurture this community? So I think this probably ties in with a question that I forgot that I then remembered about having the same people doing the same things in there. It's all about just doing stuff together, but spotting those opportunities, not just for yourself, but for other people as well, I think. And there's always people in the group doing stuff with each other. And quite often, I don't know about it. You know, and it's not, wasn't frankly, none of my business. If someone starts something with someone else, it's amazing. But as an example, Last year, we did something for Mental Health Awareness Week, and I think there ended up being 16 or 17 people involved in it, and it was a whole bunch of voice artists, an animator, a composer, and lots uh, a copywriter, and lots of different people got involved doing stuff. And it's it just shows that I think the importance of community to bring people together, not just for relationships but for opportunities to do stuff that was an unpaid project granted but there's there's other like as an example the other day um i wouldn't have been able to go out on a on a, some shoots with one of the videographers in the group unless i'd have been in that group I, I i had known nothing about cameras really compared to the videographers but i i got invited out because i can carry bags and they know me that's the <laughs> that's the other part of it. it it's a group of people that we can all trust it, it, yeah, that com- that community trust and the the willingness to help each other mm. is is a really good thing. That that's really strong. So number one reason, and these aren't ranked in importance. Number one reason for going out and starting your own networking group is community. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. What's reason number two? And we spoke about this beforehand. Reason number two. Oh, yes, peer support. Hey, yes, well I should done. have made notes as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I made notes of what we're doing, but but <laughs> amazing. Um, yeah, peer support, and I touched on this in in the other uh, point number one, but it's just knowing that there's a, it's almost like a team just there, ready to help with advice, support, ideas work as well collaboration opportunities and the i think you've seen it in the in the 
the peer-to-peer support WhatsApp group we've got where someone will say something like, feeling a bit down today, can anyone jump mm-hmm. on a call, have a chat? Or does anyone ha- anyone got any experience on white labeling as a videographer, for example, for, for a marketing agency and all things like that? And 95% of the time, within 10, 15 minutes, someone has jumped in saying, I can help with that. I can help with that. Or I don't know someone, but you know, maybe so-and-so can do it. Um, and that that's really it, I think. The support from whether it's a new business or someone's been doing it for 40 years, there's no one in there, I think, that, that really has that sort of ego complex of I've been doing it longer, so I'm better. And everyone just wants to, to help each other learn stuff. And you're a great example of that, of course. Bring it oh, with your you. with your YouTube workshop that you did the other day as well. So I, I, I'm not here to sell the Creative Collective um, networking group. Obviously, if you are in the creative industry, <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the creative industry, you should really check it out. But I want to kind of celebrate the model, really, because it's the antithesis, if that's the right word, of what we were talking about earlier: groups of miserable, white-haired, middle-aged men. So I was just looking at myself in the reflection. So that's us, isn't it? <laughs> Whitehead, middle-aged man. That's me. Yeah, the, the total opposite of a load of people sat in a room is the Creative Collective is primarily online, but it also has some some WhatsApp groups, which are very active. And I'll be honest, they are so active, I have to have them muted. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise my, my WhatsApp would be going absolutely bonkers all the time. But the peer-to-peer support group on there, as we're talking about peer support, I've seen some really incredible things, even when it's come down to... Some things that, some negative things that can happen to you if you're in business. The speed of the support, because we all, you know, a lot of us all work at home these days. So, for example, somebody popped up in there saying that they'd done some work and their client was refusing to pay the invoice. And obviously, that's incredibly stressful if you work for mm. yourself, especially if you're a freelancer, because that can be so hand to mouth, even if you're running the company brilliantly. Mm. And within seconds, loads of people are like, right, jump on a call. Let's let's support you here. And that's where people sharing experience is really important. And good networking isn't just going along to see what you can get out of it. I mean, to quote uh, JFK, I don't want to go to Texas. No, Uh, to quote JFK, ask not what your country can do for you, but for what you can do for country music. Was that right? I have no idea. (laughs) <laughs> let's skip on because i'm derailing myself here like i'm supposed to be the host here and um dear listener and viewers you can tell uh, martin and i've known each other for a while i can recommend a book uh going along with that phrase called the go-giver um oh. and it's and it's all about um ex- exactly what you just said you know giving to people um without really expecting anything in return because why wouldn't you if someone asked for your help why wouldn't you help them exactly and that this is this is something that's more and more visible, especially in, in the community of business owners, well, the ones I know. And I guess we kind of form our own bubbles with these things, mm. but it's a good feeling, especially if you have got, if you've got experience of something that somebody else is now experiencing for the first time, having the attitude of, well, this is what I learned rather than what you've got to do is, mm. I think that that's a, a really nice thing because you feel supported. I think often when I first started in business that I ended up kind of more or less completely rejecting all business advice originally many, many years ago because all I ever got was what you need to do is. And I was thinking, well, I'm already under enough stress because I don't know what I'm doing. And and, and now you're going to give me this whole list of other things. So, yeah, gentle nurturing, um, pastoral care, I think is the phrase. <laughs> Beautiful. 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 Right. So point number one, reason number one to start your own networking group community. Reason number two to start your own ne- networking group peer support. Reason number three is fun. We're not allowed to have fun. We run businesses. All right. I'll change it to uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, genuinely, it is. I mean, it's hard work, you know, and the time that that you'll put into it is is not paid back in financial terms i mean you 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 will get business from it because you're i guess in some ways you're the focal point of the group just because you you facilitate it we're not really the leaders anymore because it's a community we we don't have to get the chat going on i did mm. post in there earlier when no one said anything because i just thought it was weird that no one had said anything for <laughs> for hours but if we took a day off it would it would continue you know continue as it is 
but the the fun element is yes it's hard work but what you get out of it in terms of the relationships the the laughs i'm gonna use an awful word now the bants with everyone the you know the gifts all of that sort of thing and just hanging out as well we've hung out a few times people from the group going out and just eating or just you know doing doing stuff together and it's just a nice thing to be part of you know you've you've you have a team that you can just say is anyone fancy doing anything yes all right and that's it and that and you've always got that thing to talk about as well because you're a part of the same group oh did you hear what andrew did the other day (laughs) (laughs) that sort of stuff um but yeah it's just it's just fun because you're all on that same sort of wavelength as well so pretty much Nine out of ten of my jokes will go down well. <laughs> I've just, just, the just worn them. You just worn them down. Like yeah. we, we've got to, we've got to laugh because otherwise he'll just say it again until we do. Yeah, I think so. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's an opportunity just to have have fun. I think have a good time because why why choose to to run a business of your own if it's not to have a better life? And part of having a better life is having a good time. Excellent. And I certainly see that. So if somebody's listening to this and thinking, do you know what? I like the sound of starting my own networking group. How did you actually get it together? How did you make it happen? Because it it very much sounds like a pub talk kind of thing, you know, kind of sitting in a pub going, yeah, that'd be a good idea and wake up the next morning, you've completely forgotten about it. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I had lots of those nights. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of was like that. I I was asking around for a group like that because I wanted to join one. I couldn't find Mm. one. So I started, yeah, I was asking around, and the only person to reply with more than a no was Ben, who said no, so why don't we start one? (laughs) And that that was it. And uh, I hadn't considered starting one by that point, but the more we sort of spoke about it, the more we thought, well, let's just see what happens. Because we'd never done it before. We'd been to plenty of networking groups and a a couple together for, for a year or so. So we knew what we liked and what we didn't like. We knew what, exactly what we didn't want to do. Um, and I had a chat with someone who ran a, a successful-ish networking group for a while. I don't think it's, it's running anymore. Um, and he said, the only advice I can give you is pick a date and go for it. So that's what we did. We picked a date and then we just planned for that date and went for it. Otherwise, we would have just kept saying, oh, but what? what about this how what about structure like that or should we do it this way so we we literally i think a couple of months after i sent that message we set a date and um yeah that was that it was valentine's day i think february oh how nice 2022 and we haven't spoken since (laughs) (laughs) right so this is great i mean we're talking in spirit of talking about reason one for starting network group community reason two peer support and number three fun if somebody is listening to this and, they, and they're convinced, they go, right, I'm going to start my own networking group here. Can you give us maybe one or, or two things that are stretched that you know now you didn't know at the start? Just to save save listeners and viewers a little bit of heartache. Um, I've already, well, I was going to say the hard work. It is hard work. The continual grind to try and get new people there, um, to make it valuable enough for people to want to stay as members. Um, 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 yeah, so I, th- I think just don't think of it as a money maker. Just put that to bed straight away and just think hard work. But out of that, by default, will come all of these amazing things that we've spoken about. Plus, you'll probably get hired for stuff as well. So thank you to Martin Wiskin from the Creative Collective Networking Group. If you were listening to the beginning, just thinking, bah, I hate networking. Has this convinced you that there's a better way to do it? Are you thinking of starting your own networking group? Something we didn't really touch upon in the in the recording was just how simple it can be. The Creative Collective is mostly just on Zoom. You want to start a networking group, you haven't even got to get out of your chair. If you are thinking of starting a networking group, please let us know. Please contact us through yeseo.io. There you go. Crack on. What more are you waiting for? Contact us if you want any more help on this. Networking can be good for community it can be good for peer support it can be fun and most of all it can be good for you as a business owner thank you for watching please like subscribe and tell your mum